Am I sabotaging my weight loss? This is the question we have been hearing a lot lately, right, Adam? It is, it is. Yep, so we're gonna talk about it today. I'm Haley Pulley, head coach here at My Body Tutor. This is Adam Gilbert, founder of My Body Tutor. We are going to dive into self-sabotage and weight loss. First up, we're gonna talk about the symptom, the sign that you are self-sabotaging your weight loss. Let's go ahead and jump in. Yeah, I think the main or major symptom of self-sabotage ultimately is inconsistency. Uh, you know, you'll do great for a few days, then you'll fall off track, you'll exercise for a day, then you won't exercise the next day, but it ultimately is inconsistency. How do you feel about that? Well, I mean, okay. Uh, it's sort of weird, right? Like I, I, you think inconsistency, that's a symptom, but in the journey of weight loss, right? Sustainable, long lasting, lifelong weight loss and getting what you want, keeping what you want. We talk about it all the time. Consistency is the key. So it is like in direct opposition of reaching that goal. So it makes sense, inconsistency. And I think it seems sort of simple that that's what it is. One day you do well, the next day you don't, or maybe you go a whole week doing well and then you blow up on the weekends, but that's it, that's self-sabotage. Right. And inconsistency can be caused by a lot of things, but self-sabotage is certainly one of them, just to be clear. Okay, so what causes then self-sabotage? So self-sabotage, in my opinion, is when we actually fear the very thing we say we want, right? We fear the very thing we say we want. So we all start our health and fitness journey I want to be healthy, you know, I want to improve my fitness, I want to improve my energy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But on some level, we feel, we, we fear the very thing we're saying we want. Um, so what does that mean? What does that look like? So for example, if we, like, if we fear the very thing we say we want, the reason is because maybe on some level you feel like you have to exercise for hours a day, or maybe you feel like you'll never be able to enjoy your favorite foods again. Um, or maybe you feel like it's going to change your identity as a person, or maybe you feel like you're never going to, uh, be able to, you know, go out to dinner, uh, uh, you know, spontaneously. Um, so you, you, you fear the very things you say you want because you're, you're worried about what those things, you know, you worried about those things. You don't want those to happen. That's interesting because I feel like a lot of people would say, well, I fear failing, so I'm just not going to try. But even that could be a self-sabotage, right? Totally. Absolutely. That is certainly self-sabotage. And I think most people assume, yes, I, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to try again. I don't want to, I don't want to fail again. Um, so they won't try. Um, but for a lot of people, it's fear of success. Um, you know, think about what food does for us. It is very comforting. It is very soothing. Um, it is a quote unquote, you know, it's reliable. Um, it's a reliable way to, you know, cope with stress and deal with stress. Of course, it's not actually dealing with it. It's just suppressing it. Um, but in the moment it does work. Um, you know, it's a safety blanket, right? Think about what happens, um, when you actually lose weight, right? Let's say the person, you know, is like, you know what, once they lose the weight, I'm going to go out there and start dating again. What if they're fearful, fearful of dating? Right. So then that means on some level, you know, they're scared of dating and they know that once they lose the weight, they're not going to have the security blanket or the safety blanket of saying, well, once I lose weight, then I can have that. Because once they lose the weight, what's the excuse then? Right. That this is sticky. This is a <laughs> this is a sticky topic. And, you know, kind of going back to what you said in the beginning, that really boils down to like an identity thing. Right. Like if I lose the weight right now for a lot of us, how we look defines who we are, right? So if we change how we look, inevitably we have to change who we are, our relationship to others, how we act, you know, in our social circles and our family circles and changing that is really uncomfortable, right? So all those points of discomfort that we're constantly coaching people through, trying to, you know, use that as a compass, well, if we self-sabotage, we never have to ex experience that. 
right? And we we get to stay who we are, which, you know, for better or for worse, we're comfortable with that. Exactly, exactly. You know, I mean, I'll give a quick analogy, right? Let's say you have a business owner. The business owner believes in this service more than anything in the world. Um, you know, they want to help as many people as they can. Um, but on some level, every business owner, um, or I should say many business owners feel overworked. They feel overwhelmed. They feel like they have the weight of the world on their shoulders, right? But there's still the part of the business owner that wants to help more people. They want to grow. They want to serve more people, right? So they, you know, they read books, they, they, they buy courses, they hire coaches. Um, they'll do anything and everything they can to serve more people and, and build their, their business, right? But on some level, the business owner also feels, again, they're overworked. They have all the responsibility in the world. And they feel that if they grow, they're going to have even more responsibility. They're going to have even less free time than they already have. So until the business owner reconciles um, how they're going to, you know, make their life better, not worse off, because on some level, they feel like if their business grows, their, work, their life is actually going to be worse off, not better off. Um, then they're going to constantly self-sabotage, right? So again, they can buy the books, the courses, the coaches, etc. But until they figure that out, they're going to constantly self-sabotage. Now, going back to weight loss, again, you, there's a million, and, you know, a million reasons to lose weight, to improve our health, to you know, just be the best version of ourselves. Um, but if we also have those other reasons that we were talking about, you know, you know, we think we're going to have to exercise for hours a day. We're never going to enjoy our favorite foods. Um, you know, we're going to have to finally go out there and make it happen. We're not going to have that safety blanket. That's going to hold us back. Um, and until we, we deal with that inner conflict, that's self-sabotage is going to stay there. Right. So this is kind of pointing to how do we stop self-sabotaging? so that we can keep losing weight, we can get the health we say we want, and so clearly do want. How, how do we get beyond that? So the key thing is you have to identify, I like to do, a, you know, identify five ways your life will be better off slash more fun. How will your life be more fun and better off when you reach your goal? And be specific, um, be aspirational, but be specific, right? You know, saying, um, I'll be healthier. But what does that mean? Like, what does healthier mean? Um, is it, you know, because you'll be able to get to wear that fun dress you've been wanting to wear, or you'll be able to wear a bathing suit, like, or you'll just be able to move with your kids or grandkids or your nieces and never, whatever it is. Be as specific as possible, but identify five ways your life will be better off and more fun when you reach your goal. Um, I, I mean, one, one thing that I always remember, um, I had one client who told me, um, you know, she was telling me all these like vague reasons, like healthier and this, and I'm like, all right, that's great. And we all want to be healthier, but like, how exactly is your life going to be better? And she's like, fine. You know what? I'm going on vacation with my sister-in-law and I want to look better than her. I'm like, there you go. That's, you know, if that, if that does it for you, then great. But it has to be specific. Um, it does, because if it's just, I want to be healthier or I want to, you know, live longer like i mean but be boil it down why do you want to live longer etc right it has to be compelling yes i mean <laughs> nobody's going to get out of bed for i want to feel better right right like we all want to feel better but it has to be compelling it has to be it has to be a pretty darn tasty carrot <laughs> yes <laughs> right like it can't just be ho-hum run-of-the-mill stuff why is it important why it is it why is it important that your life be better too right and that's what makes it compelling okay you want to feel better why and keep going with that yes so that's the first part now the second part the kicker is how is your life better now i want you to write down or, or identify five ways you think your life is going to be worse off right so five ways you think your life will be worse off so examples um again you know i think i'm gonna have to exercise for hours a day I'm never going to be able to eat my favorite foods. Um, I've never been able to keep the weight off in the past. Um, you know, weight loss programs don't work for me. Um, there's a million reasons. I'm going to have to start dating, whatever it might be. Those are five reasons why you might think your life will be worse off. Right. And most people, I know when I've asked 
you know, some of my clients to do this exercise, a lot of people are resistant to it. There's no reason life is going to be worse. There is. If self-sabotage is occurring somewhere inside of us, we think it's not going to be worth it. And you have to get real with that. Right. And the key thing is, is most of those reasons, if not all of them are assumptions, right? So do you have to exercise for hours a day? Of course not. Can you, you know, are you never going to be able to enjoy your favorite food again? Of course not. As you know, our, you know, our philosophy is fit and happy, not fit and miserable, right? We want you to enjoy your favorite foods. We want you to, you know, enjoy that. That's part of life. Um, you know, maybe you might think I've never been able to keep the weight off. Is that true? Maybe in the past, what you've tried has not worked, but it's not like you've tried everything under the sun. Um, you know, instead of saying, you know, I, I, I'm never able to stick with it. Maybe you say, I haven't found a plan that I'm able to stick with yet. And perhaps there's reasons why. Perhaps you're trying to go, you know, too intense and you keep burning out. I mean, there's a, that's a whole other, you know, video. But challenge your reasons why um, because you'll realize all they are is beliefs. They're assumptions, um, but they feel real, right? They're roadblocks in our head. And until we remove those roadblocks, we're never going to, you know, be able to forge ahead. Right. It's identity. Again, back to identity. Well, if I've never been able to keep the weight off, all right, well, let's, let's suspend that belief for a minute and assume you can, right? You, you can become that person who keeps your weight off, but you have to be willing to become that person. So yeah, it's just beliefs. It's just thoughts and stories and ideas. They're not facts. Right. Exactly. So you're going to, you know, ultimately write down how you think your life will be better off, worse off, and then you're going to challenge those assumptions and fears. And that's what they are. And sometimes it's uncomfortable. Sometimes, you know, you, you realize, hey, you know what, maybe I am scared of dating, or maybe I am scared of giving up that identity of being the fun person, right? Or the person who's down for anything, even though that doesn't mean you have to give up that identity. Um, but you might feel like you, you do. Um, sure, maybe you limit things, maybe instead of having, you know, a bunch of drinks, you have a few less drinks, whatever it might be, but you don't have to change your entire life to change your life here. You just have to really carefully think about, you know, what you're assuming and what are beliefs versus what's actually reality. Great. Great. All right. So symptom of self-sabotage is inconsistency. So if it's happening, you want to understand why it's happening. You're fearing the very thing you say you want the most. And then we've talked about how to overcome that self-sabotage so you can continue losing weight and get what you want so you can be successful. Anything else you want to add? So I love warning lights um, because they are there for a reason and they help us a lot if we don't ignore them. And I think there is a warning light of self-sabotage. And I think the warning for us is what I call FDR, fear, discomfort, doubt, and resistance. And when you're feeling any fear, any discomfort, any doubt or resistance, that is likely a sign of self-sabotage. It is likely a sign that your brain is already figuring out a way to get yourself out of this. What do you think about that? Mm. Well, let's talk about some examples of that. So say we're working on losing weight. You know, the goal is to learn to deal with stress by taking a walk or trying something else, right? Like journaling, taking a bath, calling a friend, I don't know, turning on a YouTube video, laughing for a bit, right? Before we turn to food. But we're already kind of making some compromises with ourselves. Like we're in the car on the way home. It's been a long day. I'll just do it this one time. I know the plan was this. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, I mean, I think it's just, you know, it's our brain's way of kind of letting ourselves off the hook, so to speak, right? So for fear, it could be, you know, you're fearful of, you know, wasting time, right? What if this doesn't work? Okay, but what if it does work, right? What, what, what if it does work? You know, and perhaps that fear of saying, well, I don't want to spend a few months and this doesn't work, that's self-sabotage because what if you actually instead, you took a different path 
and you stuck with it and you fully committed and you didn't let yourself off the hook, right? Doubt. Okay, so um, I don't, oh, sorry. I was just going to say, so a point at like where you're negotiating, would we call that a warning sign? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Um, you know, d d fear, discomfort, you know, discomfort. I mean, you know, if we're constantly avoiding discomfort, you know, I think that's a sign of self-sabotage. As I've often said, you know, if we do what we've always done, it's going to feel comfortable. If we do something differently, it's going to feel uncomfortable. That's it. It is not, you know, discomfort isn't this big, bad thing. It's just a sign that we're doing something differently. And if you're constantly avoiding something that's uncomfortable, then you're going to, then you're continuing to do what you've always done. And obviously you'll get the same results. Um, so, you know, anytime you have an opportunity to face discomfort, I challenge you to take it and also keep in mind the levels of discomfort, right? To me, running a marathon is a hundred on discomfort level. I don't know, submitting a report every night is, that's pretty low discomfort when you think about it, right? Or going for a walk is pretty low discomfort um, or reaching out for help when you're feeling this fear, discomfort, doubt, or resistance. That's pretty low too. Um, and I know for some people that could feel a lot because they're in the past, they usually recoil and hide when they feel any discomfort. But in, again, going back to the discomfort, I challenge you to do, do something differently. Um, you know, there, I mean, there's, there's, you know, so there's discomfort, there, there's doubt, you know, again, doubt in the process, or I doubt myself. I doubt I'm going to be able to keep the weight off. How do you know that? Have you actually worked? You know, one of the reasons why I'm such a big believer in what we do when we talk about this stuff is because the only way to sustainable weight loss is to figure out what's going on, going on between here, right? It can't just be an eat this, don't eat that approach. Right. Sure. That works in the short term, but that doesn't work in the long term. And that's why you've been able to, you know, you haven't been able to keep the weight off. But when you conquer these things and you confront them, ultimately, when you confront them and then conquer them, that's how you can keep the weight off. Um, and then, you know, discomfort, uh, fear, fear, discomfort, doubt, resistance um, and then resistance. I mean, again, resistance is, you know, anytime there's some sort of opportunity, there's resistance. You feel yourself tensing up. You feel yourself, you know, annoyed. You feel yourself you know, uh, I, I can't do this. It's just a resistance, right? You know, one of my mantras is to lean into it. Try to lean into it versus lean away from it, right? Turn towards, not turn away from it. And if you turn towards resistance, you know, I'm very confident you're going to get closer and closer to where you want to be. Yeah. I like to say like that moment where your brain goes, Ugh, I don't feel like it. That's the exact moment you need to get up and do it. Right. Yes. Whatever that thing is that your brain said, I don't feel like it. Nope. Get up and do it. And I think that's what you're talking about with that embracing that resistance. It's like turn the tables quick. Right. And and one of my favorite tricks to do that is let's say you committed to working out. Allow yourself to, you know, ask yourself, what's the least possible thing I can do without doing nothing? Right. So you have to do something. But what's the smallest thing you can do without doing nothing? And that's a great way to conquer that, oh, I don't feel like it. Right, right. The other thing with something like that is, are you going to regret it? Never. You're never going to regret doing something that serves who you're trying to become, right? Right. Like, you're never going to regret, like, doing 10 push-ups if your goal was to do a 30-minute workout. Like, you're never going to say, I wish I had done nothing. Right. I All think right. there's a well, ton of food for thought in this video. I think self-sabotage is yeah. absolutely fascinating. Um, but if you explore really this is. and really choose to confront it, then, you know, the sky's the limit for you. I really, I really believe that. Yeah. It goes way beyond the plate, way beyond the gym, you know, running, working out it goes way beyond what we would normally think of in the fitness world. But I, I truly think like you, this is the key. This is the key to making it last. Conquer this and, you know, you've got what you want. Yeah, it's it's all the mental stuff, right? It's not just, you know, it can't just be what you're eating, what you're not eating, what you're doing for exercise, what you're not doing for exercise. Um, right. You got to work on what's going on between here. And once you do, you know, sustainable weight loss is absolutely possible. It is absolutely possible. I've been doing this, you know, since 2007. And that's why I believe in what I do so much. Um, so... I really, really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I encourage you to embrace it, lean into it. Um, you know, anytime you feel it, I challenge you to reach out to your coach instead of recoiling and hiding, which for some people is their nature. Try to go the opposite way. 
and we will see you guys soon. Take care. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked that video, check out the link for another great video right here. And if you're having trouble staying consistent, if you feel like you know what to do but just can't seem to do it, I invite you to check out uh, our coaching program. It's in the link below. We offer one-to-one -one accountability, coaching, support. I know you're going to love it. And let's go. Together we can make it happen.